Okay, good afternoon. I'm J.C. De La Garza. I'm with the Office of Buse Nuclear Fuel Disposition located in Las Vegas, Nevada. Um, I am the federal point of contact for um, forced helium dehydration, FHD, and vacuum drying of used nuclear fuel. That's IRP FC2. Um, chart 2, please. New Reg 1536, Standard Review Plan for Spent Fuel Dry Storage Systems at a General License Facility, states that an accepted method for vacuum drying of canisters is to evacuate to a pressure less than or equal to 4 times 10 to the minus 4 megapascals with demonstration that the canister will maintain that pressure for 30 minutes after being isolated from the pumping system. It is believed that water in the cask provides a mechanism for possible deterioration of the materials. It would follow that a method to evaluate the drying effectiveness and options for improving the drying processes should be developed. Chart 3, please. A little bit of background here. As an alternative to the vacuum drying technology, and an alternative to the vacuum drying technology has been accepted that involves the circulation of non-reactive gas at a specific temperature and pressure to dehydrate the loaded canister. The 4 times 10 to the minus 4 megapascals criterion is based on calculations of the quantity of oxidizing gases that would remain in the canister after drying. The level of dryness has not been confirmed by actual measurement of residual water that remains. Residual water could cause corrosion of the cladding and internal structures or lead to a flammable condition if hydrolysis of water creates free hydrogen and oxygen. Drying too rapidly can cause ice formation in the canister, which would be of concern at confined locations, that is, breached or waterlogged fuel rods, or where there is a difficult path for water to exit the canister. If ice forms, the canister could meet the pressure specification even though water remains in the canister. Chart 4, please. The objective of this IRP is to measure the quantity of unbound liquid water and ice that remains following drying. Models should be developed and underlying data should be collected to predict remaining water, whether it be unbound liquid or physically and chemically bound. Chart 5, please. <clears throat> Considering these challenges, the research needs of this IRP must include all of the following. Fuel assembly mock-ups. To undertake these tests, a vacuum drying system and a forced gas dehydration system similar to those used in the industry should be acquired or built then employed on specialized canister and fuel assembly mock-ups. The fuel assembly mock-ups should physically represent locations where water could be difficult to remove from prototypic assembly designs, that is, pressurized water reactors 17 by 17 and boiling water reactor 10 by 10 assemblies. These should include a certain number of breached rods with the size and location of the holes based on operational experience for damaged fuel. Other locations to be considered should include the dash pot region of the guide thimble tubes for pressurized water reactor assemblies, water rods for boiling water reactor assemblies, and creviced regions associated with assembly hardware such as grid spacers, nozzles, and tie plates. Canister mock-ups. Full-sized canister mock-ups are not required for the test program, but they should be able to accommodate full-length mock-up assemblies. Canister mock-ups could be fabricated from pipe segments or other cylindrical structures fitted with bolt-on lids to allow for insertion and removal of the mock-up assembly. Except for any modification that are needed for making measurements, the ports for connection between the canister and drying system as well as the configuration of the vacuum siphon tube should be similar to those in industry systems. System testing. 
The tests will involve the performance of drying operations in a manner consistent with industry practice, after which the quantity of water remaining in the canister will be measured. In a series of drying runs, specific variations of certain parameters should be made to determine if these affect the quantity of residual water. Vacuum drying is typically performed in a stepwise approach to progress down in pressure, thereby reducing the likelihood of ice formation by limiting the pumping speed and providing time for the system to equilibrate. Within the industry practices, however, there are differences in specifications such as the number of hold points and the end pressure. Therefore, the drying runs should include variations in these parameters to envelop the range of industry standard practices. Forced gas dehydration tests should include a range of inert gases consistent with those used in practice. Variability in gas temperature and pressure should be included in the testing matrix for the forced gas dehydration tests. Methods should be devised to determine the quantity of water present after drying by measurements such as water, mass balance, pressure, dew point, or temperature. Chart six, please. Specific deliverables must include progress report. A progress report on the project test plan will be submitted six months after the beginning of the performance period. Setup and verification progress report. A status report on test setup and verification activities will be submitted 18 months after the beginning of the performance period. Analytical models. A report on analytical models developed for simulation of drying processes shall be submitted 24 months after the beginning of the performance period and final project report. 36 months after the beginning of the performance period, a final project report shall be delivered that documents the work performed and discusses the final conclusions and recommendations. That concludes the presentation portion. I'd be happy to um, try to answer your questions. Okay, our first question is, will other dry assist Let me reword this a little bit. Hang on just a second. Will other dry systems be considered in this study? Other dry systems? Um, I'm not sure I understand the, uh, the, the question. Um, other drying systems? Uh, yeah, perhaps that's it. Other drying systems. Absolutely, innovative approaches to, uh, to to drying systems would be would be considered. However, um, I indicated that um, that the um, new reg 1536 addresses um, methodologies that have been accepted. Uh, is my understanding. So if if new drying systems are, are proposed, something innovative would be would be considered. 